So let's say I want to implement an interface. So I have type I and it's going to be an interface. And this interface will implement or this interface requires you to implement, let's say, a function X, right? So you have to implement for me a function X that doesn't return anything for you to implement this interface, right? And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, just uh, keep watching, I'll explain. So let's say I want to define type S and this is gonna be a struct. Also, it can be any type you want. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to attach to this struct a function X, right? Or a method X. Okay, and what this is going to do is actually not important. We're just going to say, uh, we're going to print out hello world, right? Okay, perfect. So now what we have is we have this interface I, right? And this interface I requires you to implement X. And as you can see here, we implemented X. So, if you're just getting started with Golang and you come from, let's say, Java or C Sharp or even C++, you may be asking me, well, why aren't we doing something like this, like uh, uh, interface I, right? Like I, I know in those languages you have like, you have to like explicitly say that something implements uh, something else. Uh, but in Golang, the way it works is if you satisfy the interface. So for example, if the interface requires to have an X and you have an X here, well, congratulations, you have satisfied this interface. So let's actually use this. So I'm say var my interface, uh, the variable name doesn't really matter, i. So I am defining my interface as the interface type i, right? So I'm not defining it as a struct, I'm defining it as the interface type i. And I'm gonna say it's gonna be equal to s, right? Like so. And we're gonna do my interface not x. And that is how you are gonna use this interface type. Okay, so let's actually run this. Undefined FMT. Oh, uh, okay. It's not my day today. Okay, there we go. So, hello world, there we go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a function foo, right? And I'm gonna accept a variable x, and this x is gonna be of the type empty interface. And down here, all we're gonna do is we're gonna just do fmt.println, and we're gonna print out x, right? Pretty simple. Okay, pretty simple, right? Uh, okay, so let's see how this works. So if you remember, so I hope you remember that uh, Golang is a type language, right? And here we're accepting an empty interface. So what are we going to be able to accept into this foo function? Well, let's see. We're going to be able to accept a string. Let's see if that this works. And yes, it did. Okay, what about a slice? And that works too. And let's uh, try accepting uh, integer. And as you can see, we got, and as you can see, we got five back. So basically what, what we're doing here is we have to find a function which can take any type, right? So any type you pass into it is gonna be usable within this function. And I just want you to know that there is a shortcut to typing this out. You can just do X any. And this basically means the same thing. And I'm not like, I'm not actually kidding here. Uh, if we go to the definition of any, it's literally an empty, empty interface. So there you go. It even says so right here. Okay, so now that we uh, have that out of the way, let's uh, talk about the reader and the writer interface, right? So here's the thing. Um, the reader and the writer interfaces, you have to understand them. You have to kind of like uh, spend a lot of time studying them if you don't understand them completely simply because 
the entire Go standard library is kind of like based on the reader and the writer interface. And let me give you an example. So if I do like fmt dot printf, so this one. So this function, this function takes a IO writer, right? Let's take a look at what an IO writer is. So as you can see, this interface requires you to implement writer. And what the writer does is it takes a byte slice and it returns to you an uh, integer and returns to you an error, right? And we also have the reader interface, right? So we have a reader and the reader is a function called read, right? It takes a byte slice, it returns an uh, integer and returns an error, right? So uh, these two interfaces are actually very similar. So as you can see, it takes a slice, returns n, returns error. This one takes a slice, returns n, returns error, right? Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to actually use the writer interface. And the simplest way to kind of show you in the standard library how this works is we can do fmt dot fprintf, like so. And we're going to pass in here. The first argument to fprintf is actually a writer. So we can pass in, let's say, os.std out, right? And the second argument can be, it can really be anything. It can say, hello world, right? That's fine. Fprintf is actually a really bad name for this function simply because we're not taking a file as the first argument, we're taking a writer, right? So if I go to the definition, we're taking an IO writer, right? This is an uh, interface type, and this is something that just has to implement the right method, right? So the reason why I think they kept with the name Fprintf is simply because uh, Fprintf is a function of a name in C, and uh, they kind of want to stick with um, the naming convention simply because Golang is supposed to be a language derived from C. Well, anyways, so basically what we're doing is we're passing in something that implements the writer interface and we're passing in, you know, like a format. And if you want, you can like, you know, pass in other things here. It doesn't matter. This is just an example. So as you can see, when we got back, hello world. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. And what we're going to do here is we are going to simply pass in this file in place of this std out, right? And as you can see, we create this file, new file, and it wrote to this new file, hello world, right? So you can also create your own writer. And since you can create your own writer, you can do something like this. All right, so what we did here is we created a custom write struct, right? The struct has a single field size. And what we do down here is we actually implement the writer interface. And the way that we implement it is, this, this is actually up to you, right? You can implement your interfaces however you want. And what we're doing here is we are simply, so what we're doing here is we're simply setting the size in the struct to the length of the byte slice that's passed in, right? And as per how we implement this interface, we have to uh, return how many bytes were set or how many bytes were written and an error. Uh, simply, we don't have an error here, so we're going to return nil, right? And down here, what we're doing is we're creating this custom write, right? And we're passing this struct to fprintf, right? So keep this in mind. fprintf is not going to print out size. What fprintf is going to do is it's going to write hello world to cw. And when it writes hello world to cw, it's going to set the size of the struct, right? And finally, what we're going to do is going to do cw.size, which is going to print out how many characters are in hello world, right? And as you can see, we got 11. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is how to implement the stringer interface. And the stringer interface is simply it's kind of like a two string method. So let me show you how it works. Uh, so let's say I have a type, which is like a person type. So let's say I have a type person, right? And uh, it's a struct and this uh, type person has, let's say a last name and has a first name and it has an age. And what I want to do is I want to instantiate a new person.
And finally, what I want to do is I want to print out uh, this person, right? So I'm going to do fmt.println and I'm going to pass in this person and let's actually print this out. So it's not, it's not really that appealing, right? So you may not want to have these squiggles. You may not want to have this ampersand. You want to have like a custom uh, print method that actually prints out your person. So to do this, we are going to implement this interface, which is just a string method, right? It's a string method that returns a string. And the string method is going to return a string as well. So what are we going to do with our string method? Well, simply put, what we can do is going to do fmt.sprintf, which is a very nice function to use, indeed. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to print out all of the fields of this struct, but I guess present them nicer. And don't forget to return this. Okay, so let's see what this change did. So this change, so keep in mind, I didn't change any of this code, right? All I did is I just implemented the string method, right? And let's see how this works. Actually, first, let me show you how this works without this string method. So let's print this out. And as you can see, we got a default print, I suppose. And let's see how it looks with this print method. There. Uh, it looks um, a lot nicer, I suppose. Well, anyways, so if you like this video, uh, make sure you check out my other videos in this series, and I will see you later.